Hi, I'm watercolor artist Angela Fair. As an artist who's made a name for having a loose and fluid intuitive style, flow is very important to me. I really work to be in a mindset of flow, in tune with my materials, watching what's happening on the paper, even more so than putting my brush down on the paper. And this plays a big role in how I choose my supplies and materials. When I'm painting, I want to paint that's going to flow and granulate and separate beautifully. I want brushes that are going to dance across the paper and when it comes to paper I want paper that's going to welcome the amount of water I use, that's going to encourage flow and let the paint move and mingle organically. I want a paper with a beautiful texture and one that really helps my art to feel like art even before I start painting. A few years ago, I was introduced to indigo art paper. This is a handmade watercolor paper made in India. And as I've used it, uh, I noticed that my painting became just a little bit more meditative as I learned to pause and watch what was happening on the paper as I painted. It really helped me to develop my intuitive style. And that's been something that I'm so thankful for uh, because I really love the art I'm making these days uh, as I embrace that inner loose and fluid artist. I wanted to tell you a little bit about indigo art paper today. And if you're interested in trying out this beautiful handmade paper, you might want to know a little bit more about it. So let's take a look at the paper before uh, I start painting and I'll just show you a little bit of what they offer. Uh, first of all, Indigo uh, offers a 100% cotton paper and I stress using natural cotton paper for painting because I've found that cellulose blend papers do not encourage flow. Something that I didn't know is when I was looking for 100% cotton paper that there's actually different types of cotton out there too. Indigo uses 100% cotton rag to make their paper. Rags have longer fibers, so there's more durability there. In fact, if you're uh, working with the full sheets of 300 pound, which I love to use a full sheet for a big painting uh, or tear it down, uh, this paper is so durable, you can't even tear it. It's just the fibers, seriously, you can't. The fibers are knit together and it's just got this beautiful strength to it. And that means if you're working with a lot of water, it's just going to hold up so much better. A little bit of paper terminology for you. I mentioned that this is th their 300 pound paper. That is the thickest paper Indigo makes and it really is a lot like a card. Um, it's, it's heavy and durable and I always find that 300 pound paper just holds up and flows a little bit better than the thinner paper. However, for those of you who love 140 pound paper, um, they carry that weight as well. Indigo does not use bleach in their manufacturing process, so it's much more environmentally friendly and good for the environment. And, and then you get that beautiful natural color. Because it's a handmade paper, we also see some irregularity in the weave. And that to me adds to the beauty of watercolor when I'm painting then the colors start to separate and we start to see that texture varying across the page. It adds to, to, for me, it adds to that beauty of the artwork. And I love to accommodate those beautiful moments where the paint separates in a certain area. Uh, we make that a star of the painting. Indigo to me feels a little bit softer. Water does not flow on the paper the same way as it does in some of the other papers that I'm, uh, that I'm using. Uh, I notice that the water takes a little bit longer to soak in. It extends my drying time and it also allows for just a little bit more flow. At the same time, there's this, the texture of the indigo paper works beautifully with sedimentary pigments. And any pigments that have those heavier particles that want to sink down uh, in your wash, they're going to just settle so beautifully into this textured paper. And uh, I find that I have to be very careful not to overuse my sedimentary pigments. If I'm using sedimentary or granulating pigment over the whole painting, it's just got so much texture, it almost overpowers the painting. So I do try to choose my sediments wisely, and I would encourage you to do that too. 
because we have that longer drying time, I get to do something that I call pigment channeling. And that is when I've placed my paint in this rich saturation on the paper. And then after it's settled in a bit and a lot of the excess water has flowed off the page already, I'll actually take a, a wet brush or a spray bottle and I'll start to kind of rinse some of the paint away from the surface of the paper. And then all the little particles that have settled in down below get to kind of shine forth. And sometimes those heavier pigments don't get seen if you're using a lot of paint. So pigment channeling, rinsing some of that color away gives us that opportunity to get actually some of the white of our paper back as well as seeing that beautiful texture. And I just think it's a lot of fun. Uh, another technique that I never really thought of until I started using handmade indigo art paper. Indigo also uh, has a flax and cotton blend paper and I wanted to show that to you because it is just a little warmer than the 100% cotton, but because it's a flax and cotton blend, it's not a cellulose blend, it gives us the same beautiful flow that I'm accustomed to in the cotton paper. In fact, I really don't feel like there's a difference in how the paint flows between the flax cotton blend and the cotton. Um, what you do see is the much warmer color. And so if you're working on a painting where you want that beautiful ivory warmth to shine through in your painting, this is a great place to start um, with the flax and cotton blend. In addition to making these beautiful watercolor papers, which I've used extensively and really trust, in fact, I'd often bring indigo to my workshops for my students to try. Uh, we tend to be very brand loyal, so it's hard to try a new paper. But when you try out different products, you really get to see uh, potential for, for new possibilities, and I really love that. Uh, especially as I work with indigo and felt um, my enjoyment of flow just increasing so much more as I saw the paint flow across the paper. Indigo also makes a mixed media paper. This would be similar to a hot press watercolor paper in smoothness. It's very smooth. Uh, however, it's thinner and lighter than their watercolor paper. And I'm actually looking forward to trying this for sketching and uh, quick studies. Again, a lighter paper is often just more portable and they also make it in a hard bound sketchbook. Because I'm thinking about watercolor all the time and I'm lo I love to experiment with different products uh, as a way of increasing my creativity. When I try a new product, I see new possibilities. So I'm really looking forward to getting to know this mixed media paper. One thing I've noticed with indigo paper, especially on the large full-size sheets here, is that the outer inch or two of the paper, um, all around this beautiful handmade deckled edge, the texture often changes slightly from the middle of the page. Uh, and I like that. It's a reminder to me that around the edges of my painting, I generally want to simplify and have less detail so that the eye is drawn into the focal areas of the painting. We don't want people getting stuck and lingering around the edges. So I like to keep uh, in those areas where the texture starts to get a little bit different, it starts to change as we move toward the edge of the paper. I like to use that as my reminder to really work um, with soft fluidity on those edge pieces. One thing that I think is so unfortunate is that often artists tend to hoard their really good paper. You're working on 100% cotton mold made paper for your good copies, but for everything else, all your studies and sketches, all your prep work, you're using cheaper paper. And what happens is you change your working method depending on what your surface can handle. So if you're working on cheap paper, for all of your practice and development work, and then you switch to the good quality paper. First of all, you tighten up, you tense up because you don't want to waste the paper. And secondly, you often have to adjust your working method because the techniques that work to compensate for the weaknesses of the poorer quality paper, they're not necessary or they don't work on your 100% cotton paper. And so what I like about Indigo so much is that they recognize this. And so not only do they sell the big sheets of full, full sheets of paper and some you know, different smaller sizes as well, but they also offer a beautiful range of hard hardcover books. We have the handmade sketch hardcover books. These are the these are the thinner paper and uh, beautiful handmade paper, still 100% cotton, but a thinner weight than are in their 
um, wire pads. These are a wire bound sketchbook that has the exact same paper you're getting in your loose sheets. And what I really like about these wire rope pads is they feel like a premium sketchbook. They are a premium sketchbook. And uh, I love that I can take this sketchbook, the wire rope pad with me and work my studies, my planner paintings on the same paper that I'm going to come home and use back in the studio. It just makes it so much easier to transition to a larger size painting. They also make their mixed media hardcover book and this has that slightly thinner paper, a little bit smoother, um, but still able to take uh, quite a lot of punishment. You can still layer watercolor and uh, paint on this uh, lovely book and I think it would make a wonderful travel ske sketchbook. As I've gotten to know Indigo, I get to know which papers work for different subjects, for different uh, mindsets, and for different styles. And I can choose from this broad range as it suits me. Let's take a look at how I use my paper as part of my tools for creating paint my paintings. First of all, the white of the paper is extremely important in watercolor. In no other medium do we rely so much on our surface to make up the part of the painting, the important part. The light of the painting comes from the white of the paper. And so I always want to be painting with a mind to letting some of that white show through, keeping those whites, and working my values uh, with that transparency of watercolor. I've started with transparent colors and I usually start painting with a transparent color so that I can keep those lights. This is in Danthrin Blue. And you can see how the texture of the paper is already showing through that loose wash and uh, giving us a little bit of a pebbled effect. In Danthrin has a beautiful flow to it. It really uh, dances across the paper when you're working with a lot of water. It blooms heavily <laughs> as well. And uh, I love to see it move in those wet washes. I'm using my brush to guide the placement of the paint, uh, pulling with my brush out from the color, adding paint and color, and then moving it around on the surface of the paper. I am working with a few opaque colors here. This is uh, Horizon Blue. Uh, I'm working with a bit of lavender as well. And those opaque colors really are beautiful in that uh, wet transparent wash of Indanthrin Blue. They, they bring a little bit of light back and because of the way the, the water uh, kind of pools on the surface of the indigo paper, uh, you can see that I have droplets of water sitting there as the paint or the water takes a little bit of time to settle into the painting. And that gives me better working time. It gives me time to observe the paint and water and how it moves. It gives me time to manipulate it. And because I'm working wet on dry, the paper's dry, the pigment stays in those wet areas uh, where I've placed it. And I'm really looking at those edges and contrasts uh, to give that feeling of water splashing white foam. Uh, the white foam, of course, comes from the paper. And that irregular edge uh, gives me that feeling of action and movement and that organic shape. Painting water with water uh, I, for me, that just feels like a special kind of symmetry in poetry. What better medium to use to give that uh, feeling of movement and energy than a, a fluid pigment like watercolor? And you can see how I fling with my brush to actually give us that feeling of movement. I'm not just working really intentionally, but I want that loose, um, unexpected energy to happen as well. Because this is an abstract, my focus has been the composition overall. I'm looking at that large kind of V shape of the splash of water, uh, bracketed or framed by the white space. And uh, with that in mind, I'm just enhancing that shape by creating a, a stronger dark right at the very top center here. Um, strengthening that V. My brush is actually really helping me here because it's got a long, uh, long pointy shape. It's a, a kind of a dagger striper brush is what they call it. And I can use the point of the brush for fine lines, but you see for this composition, I'm really using the side of the brush and that's pulling the paint across the paper and creating this beautiful organic shape that I don't get if I'm drawing with the point of the brush. 
I love a versatile brush that gives me that option to use the point or use the full body of the brush sideways as it is. I'm moving into starting to add my rocks here. I'm using a warm gray and the warmness of this gray, using a gray with a little bit of a browner tone is going to contrast beautifully with a painting that has so far been very, very cool. My, I want my grays, my rock shapes to be really quite dark, but I know that with watercolor, we do better by starting with a little lighter value and letting that color uh, build up in successive layers as we add more pigment. So right now I'm just getting those first shapes in and you can see I've used a spray bottle to actually get that gray flowing and also bring some of that blue into the rock. This is going to give me a, a really nice flowing shape between the water and the rocks. It's going to connect those pieces so they don't feel pasted on. And I always want to create unity between the different elements of my paper. I also know that this paper, again, with that pebbled uh, surface, it's going to uh, really work well with my rocks and give me some great texture uh, from the paper itself. And uh, using a lot of water allows the pigments to move, allows the sediments in the pigments to settle into that textured paper in a really beautiful way. You know, I've been painting on this for a while and I still have lots of fluidity happening. 100% cotton paper really gives you, uh, extends your, your painting time. And of course, a lot of that is dependent on your climate and how much water you start with. But as I've been painting, you know, I'm continually adding um, more moist pigment. I'm often spraying with my spray bottle to let color flow as well. So I'm, I'm not just using the water that I put on the paper initially, but I'm also maintaining that moistness. Uh, with additional pigment and water. Working wet on dry like this means that I get to create crisp shapes as well as seeing that flow happen. It is my favorite way to paint for that variation and being able to pivot between looseness and fluidity, tension and control. As I'm creating these rocks, I'm creating some negative shapes. Uh, I'm liking the shape of the rock here. I usually kind of balance between hard and soft drawing that first crisp shape and then letting it flow and soften a bit. As the pigment soaks in and the water soaks into the paper, I can place some darker values here and, and some line work. Using that point of the brush, I'm going to get a soft line, but that paper has, has dried to the stage where it's not completely dry. There's that softness there, but it does also hold its line and uh, give me some texture a little bit of form and contour to my rocks, even at this early stage. I'm pulling back to evaluate to really look at the painting, see how it feels to me, see what it feels like it needs. Any place that maybe demands too much attention, I'll often soften, let a little water onto the page, and let things flow a bit. And often I do that around the edges of the paper. This kind of abstract, intuitive painting is really stepping into the unknown. I have a general idea for what I want to paint, but I don't really know what it's going to look like when I'm done. I have to be in tune with the painting. And to me, that means feeling really good about my ability to react to what's happening on the paper and respond to it. And to create this kind of dynamic effect where I'm watching the paint, I'm seeing possibilities and I'm exploring those possibilities and it's, it's an experiment. And I do this best when I'm working with materials that feel like poetry. They feel like art before I ever touch them to the paper. And that's colors that I love, brushes that feel intuitive and paper that really engages with the painting and all of these things are factors in creating a, a painting that is heart-led, authentic. Really, art is about openness. And so we want to work with materials that feel right to us. We want to trust our instincts and, and not discount their importance. 
I think that's one reason why I am enjoying using indigo papers so much, you know, uh, working with a handmade paper, again, inviting other people into my painting process. Hands have touched this paper and those hands have brought me paper that is an artistic surface for me to create my paintings on. Uh, an irregular surface that has some unexpected qualities. A surface that welcomes the paint and allows it to flow, that showcases those beautiful pigment textures. Those are just a few of my favorite things about indigo art paper. A few of the reasons why I love using this paper for my watercolor paintings. When you find the right paper, when you, f when you find a material that plays so nicely in your own studio practice, uh, with your own personal style. Uh, it's a really exciting adventure to start a painting together. As I've gotten to know Indigo, I've realized they've got a little bit of paper for everything. Uh, you know, if I'm in a quick hurry to sketch something, I, there's a book for that. And when I'm ready to really let color flow, I've got paper for that as well. My search for watercolor magic led me to Indigo art paper, and I'm so glad that it did.